This is the next problem I'm going to work. So in this problem, we're considering a piston cylinder device as opposed to the last problem was just a rigid tank. So what happens if our boundary can move? So in our system, and our system is uh, the R134A that's located in this volume both of these states. Well initially we have this volume having a mass of 10 kilograms and it's still a closed system so we know mass is constant. We have the refrigerant 134A. The volume initially is 1.595 meters cubed and the temperature at 1 is minus 26.4 degrees Celsius. We add some heat and then the temperature at state 2 rises to 100 degrees C and what we're assuming is that the piston rises up and reaches a point where its pressure at point 2 is equal to the pressure at point 1. Alright, so what is the first thing that we need to do? Well let's find out what we know. So what do we know? And it may help you guys to find out also if I tell you what you're looking for uh, but what we're looking for is what's the final volume so what's volume 2 so let's write what we know so we know that the temperature at state 1 and we'll start with state 1 is minus 26.4 degrees Celsius and the specific volume at state 1 we can calculate because we know the mass and we know the volume just like the last problem we worked. So the volume here is 1.595 meters cubed. The mass is 10 kilograms. So our specific volume is 0.15 nine five meters cubed per kilogram all right so now we know our temperature and we know our specific volume at state one we should be able to identify what state we are in and where we are on this TV diagram so let me draw this TV diagram and remember this is VF this is VG. Okay. And this is our specific volume, meters cubed per kilogram. It's our temperature in degrees C. Okay. Well, what we need to do now is find out where we are on this, exactly on this plot. And what we need to do is go to the thermodynamic tables. So let me pull those up. Okay, so I've gone to now table A11, and I'm going to check first to see if we're in a saturated mixture state. So are we in between the saturated vapor point and the saturated liquid point, or are we above this, or where are we? So what we do know is that we're at minus 26.4, so we're somewhere in between these two points here, minus 26 and minus 28. And what we're going to look at is we're going to look at these values here. We're going to look at the specific volume, either the saturated liquid state or the saturated vapor state, and see if we fall in between these. Now first, I'm going to interpolate to see what the specific volume is at a temperature of minus 26.4. So if I interpolate between these two, what you'll find out is that VF at 26.4 degrees Celsius is 0 0.00072588 meters cubed per kilogram. VG is 0 0.1929 meters cubed per kilogram. And remember, a quick check when we interpolate is to know that it has to be in between these two values. And you can see 
where I can show you here that uh, they in fact are between these two values. So this is the after interpolating, so these are at a temperature equal to minus 26.4 degrees C. Okay. So what does that tell us? Well, let's look. We know that our specific volume case is 0.1595. So here's our specific volume. And it lies in between our VF and VG points. So we're somewhere on this line here. So we are a saturated mixture. We have both vapor and liquid in our phase here. So let me go ahead and write this. So this is at a temperature of minus 26.4 degrees Celsius. And this is a constant pressure line. So our pressure here is going to be after interpolating. So I'm, what I'm going to do here now is that now that I know that we're a some type of saturated mixture, <clears throat> I'm going to come here and I know that the pressure has to be between 101.73 and 92.76. Well, if I perform my interpolation calculation, we can show that the pressure is 100 kilopascals. All right, and that does lie in between these two, just kind of, kind of as a secondary check. All right, so that's the initial pressure. And remember, we established that the initial pressure is equal to the final pressure, okay? So at state two, what we're really interested in is finding the final volume. So what's the final volume? Well, for that, we need to find, since we know mass, we need to find the specific volume of this liquid. And I, sh I won't use F here, I'll just use two at state two. What's the specific volume at state two? And how do we go about doing that? Well, since pressure one equals pressure two, and that's equal to 100 kilopascals, and we know that the temperature at which it's a mixture is minus 26.4 degrees Celsius. Okay, so what happens if we increase the temperature here? So the pressure is the same, so we're going to stay on the same line. So if we increase this temperature, so if we go up, maybe I can use another color here. So if I go up in temperature, what state are we going to be in? Well, we're going to be somewhere over here in the superheated vapor region, right? Pressure staying the same. If pressure stays the same, we just increase the temperature we're going to get superheated vapor any temperature above 26.4 degrees Celsius. Okay? So let's uh, go back to our tables. All right? So we're going back to our table, and we need, we're interested in the superheated refrigerant tables. So this is table A13. Our pressure is. 100 kilopascals or 1.1 megapascals and our temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. So at this pressure and this temperature our specific volume at our second state is 0 0.30138 meters cubed per kilogram. So if we multiply now, so specific volume times mass is equal to volume, our specific volume is 0 0.30138 kg, or meters cubed per kg, and we have 10 kilograms. Kilograms cancel, we have 3.0138 meters cubed. So that's our final answer. This would be, would be the final volume of our piston cylinder device. Let me move this out of the way. 
So I hope you got to see some practice examples. We'll do a few more here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start a new recording so that we can, uh, uh, you guys can have an, a smaller video to watch. And we'll continue now applying some ideal gas relations and continuing to use the tables uh, over the next few examples.